Welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be showing you how to add some light rays in Photoshop. Uh, now it's fairly easy, there's some different things you can do to get some different effects. But mainly we're going to be changing this image into this image. And obviously you can see we use some clone stamping, but that isn't the main focus of the video. Obviously the main focus is adding light rays. But it's a fairly simple trick, there's a few steps to it. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the computer. So we're in Lightroom now and you can see the image that I've edited. Uh, you can see how there are some gaps in the trees over here, up here, uh, which is where we're going to be adding the light rays. I'm going to aim to have the light rays kind of bounce off these light areas down here. And we're also going to try and remove my family, which are in this path. I'm going to try and straighten up the path and make it more of a leading line and kind of add more depth to the image, make it look slightly more interesting. So first of all, we're going to click right click and we're going to go edit in Adobe Photoshop. So now we're in Photoshop, we're going to come and unlock the layer and then we're going to right click and just duplicate it just for safety. And then first of all, we're going to come up to select, uh, go to color range and then we want to make sure that this bit here is selected as highlights. Uh, I'm going to have the fuzziness around 5 and the range around uh, just above 200. And now you want to select the range so that most of your highlights and the sky or the bright parts are showing your image and then click OK. Once that is done you want to click Command J to make a new layer with a selection. Then right click and click Convert to Smart Object. Wait for that to load. And then we'll go up to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur and then we're going to make sure that we've selected Zoom and we've got the best quality and we're going to make the amount 100. And we're going to move this center point up here because I want the light rays to come from the top of this image over here and shine down in this direction. So if we put it up here, you can see the direction of the light rays. Put it about here and then we click OK. So we now have the zoom blur applied and you can see it's kind of added some fuzziness, some light. If I take this away, you can see the difference is made. And this is not really the effect we're going for. So we're going to close up this tab right here and then we're going to right click and click duplicate layer. I'm going to do this three times, so it takes some time to load each time. Uh, then once it's loaded, we'll duplicate it again. Uh, and then we're going to right click, duplicate again. And click OK. Wait for that to load. OK, so it's looking better now and you can see all the light rays. If we take each one away, you can see how it just adds more each time. And you can see this is definitely too much now. Uh, so what we're going to do is going to click Shift and make sure all these layers are highlighted right click and then click convert to smart object up here okay so that's all the smart object now so we're now going to come over and select pin light right here and then you can still see it's a bit too powerful so we just grab our opacity and we'll drop it down you can obviously drop it really low but i'm going to have it probably 79 percent something around there and you can see it adds this really nice like um haziness some kind of fogginess I think it was really contrasty down here, so by adding that, it has this kind of nice misty effect to the image and creates a really nice look. Um, now, I won't really show this in the video, but now we've done the light and um, we've created that effect, I was obviously going to do the clone stamping, uh, but I won't show you all of that. I'll just quickly show you in case you didn't know how to do it. You click Alt on like a Windows keyboard or you click the Option keyboard on a Mac. So you select the in point right here, say, and then with the brush, you come over here and you can see this sort of like crosshair, that is where it's taking the image from and replacing it with, but obviously I'm going to work on that, uh, make it as neat as I possibly can, and you can see that in the final image. So that is the whole thing complete, you can see it's quite a nice effect, I'll show you the final image on the screen right here if I go to the side, I'll leave that up there for a bit, you can see how I've removed my family from the photo and replaced it with other bits of the path, and then obviously we've got the nice light rays coming in, and it creates a really cool effect. Now a few of you asked me how to do this and how I created this effect so hopefully this was able to help you and I think it mainly works in kind of mainly works in nature and I'm not sure how well it would work in urban I'm sure it would work in some scenarios but it works really well in these kind of forests where there are gaps in the trees and bits of light would be coming down. But that's it for today's video. Um, there should be some POVs coming soon. I've spent a lot of this Easter holiday out. I've been shooting Cambridge, London. Uh, I've been obviously going to Norfolk, going to these forest places. And I've been shooting a lot, so there's definitely gonna be a POV soon. And I would like to make as many POVs on this channel as possible. But that's it for today's video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.